Paul Greenfield, I'm the Vice Chancellor of the University of Queensland. I became involved in River Prize as a result of my uh, slightly early involvement in the River Symposium. So I was one of the founding group that helped put the first River Symposium together and, and from that came this, uh, the River Prize, the International River Prize at that stage. Um, I've chaired the International Prize Committee for, uh, since its inception and I've been a member of the National uh, River Prize Committee since its inception. The National Prize came a little later, as you're probably aware, than the International Prize. River Prize is really a celebration of outstanding achievements in river restoration or maintaining uh, riverine system quality. The River Prize is about celebrating success. It's about celebrating uh, outstanding achievements in restoring or in maintaining uh, riverine system quality. Those rivers can be freshwater rivers, they can be estuaries, they can be lakes. But what we're trying to identify in the, in the prize winners is groups who have, who have demonstrated outstanding performance in, in either maintaining or in restoring those systems. Without the International River Foundation, the International River Prize and ultimately the National River Prize wouldn't have come into being. It, it was the, the drive of the founding chairman of the International River Foundation, Martin Albrecht, together with Brisbane City Council and the Queensland State Government and TEES, uh, who really put the funding together to allow the first international prize to be given. So the, the role of IRF in, in establishing and then in maintaining the prize has, has been absolutely crucial. It, it, I mean, it would not have, as I said, it wouldn't have come into being and it wouldn't have continued to exist without them. In addition, IRF introduced what I think is a, a, a great additional characteristic and that is the concept of twinning, where the prize winner is asked, it's not a criteria by which they're judged, but the prize winner is asked to twin with a river in a lesser developed part of the world to really help them develop some of the uh, techniques, some of the strategies that, that, the, winning, uh, that the winning entry has, uh, has developed and, and, and so has reached a higher level. That was very much an IRF concept and I think it's a great concept. The, the judging process is complex because river systems around the world are complex. But what we look for is demonstrated achievement, in other words, in the, in the bid process, we are looking for applications to show that they have actually either improved the quality of the, of the uh, aquatic ecosystem or maintained it at a high level. So demonstrated achievement is very important. We look for innovation. In other words, business as usual doesn't get you to the prize, is, is, is the truth. We look for groups to look at the river system as a system because river systems are affected by what goes on in the land around it. So it's a systems approach. Uh, if you just do flood mitigation or you just do tree planting, that's not going to win you the prize. It, it really has to be an overall system view. And we look for perseverance because, and, and in fact, that's one of the characteristic of all the winners has been that they persevered. Rivers didn't become degraded overnight, by and large. Uh, they took a long time. It's due to human pressure, due to uh, agricultural pressure, industrial pressures. There's a lot of pressures. And you're not going to clean them up uh, overnight. So one of the key features of all winners has been the fact they've persevered. So they're the types of things that we look at. We look at collaboration as well. How well do the groups collaborate? River systems are never going to be improved by just one individual. Uh, it's groups of people, so how do people collaborate? How are the governance arrangements? So these are the features. The one thing we don't look at is size. We don't care whether the system is small or large. So we have some very large, complicated systems. Uh, the Danube, uh, the Mekong have one, the Thames. We have small trout streams in the United States. We have a small river on the border of uh, Israel and Palestine has one. So uh, we have urban creeks have won it, and we have a lake that has won the national prize. So size is not important.
I, th I think you need to look at the criteria carefully. As, as I've indicated, the size of the river is not important. But firstly, I would say if you've only just started a, a river restoration program, it's, you're premature. Because you, to, to demonstrate achievement inevitably takes time. Do you have collaboration with all your partners? Is it, again, our, the evidence suggests that very few systems uh, are improved or maintained just by one group. Uh, so do you have good links with the other groups? Um, is your approach innovative or, or is it simply a government department doing its job? If it's just the government department doing its job, that, that's what we would call business as usual and that won't win you the prize. Are you looking at your overall system? So they're the sorts of questions you, you, you need to ask yourself and you need to be able to communicate them. What you don't need to do is send in masses of information. It, it, there needs to be some work in culling the information that's provided to address the key criteria. Um, but small groups have one and large groups have one. So there is no, there is no bias. Uh, in terms of, of, of terms of size. There is some work, however, required to, to make the application um, concise and yet comprehensive. In looking to the future, I, I mean, the great frustration for the prize committee is that there's only one winner because you see these wonderful entries that, that are shortlisted and even some that aren't shortlisted, and that's encouraging. We've been adamant that we should only we should keep the number of prizes to a very low number to really uh, maintain the value of the prize as something very distinctive. But in going forward, I guess I'd, I'd like to see the River Prize truly internationalise itself where you might have a, a winner from the Americas, for example, or a winner from Asia, or a winner from Africa, and then those, and a winner from, say, Oceania or Australia, New Zealand. And then those winners come into, if you like, the final, and then there's a, a a winner chosen from that. That would be, that would be the, my, my long-term goal. Now for that to occur, of course, you need a much more um, elaborate infrastructure, infrastructure than we currently have. But, but if that occurred, we would truly be international. Uh, some of the feedback we've had has shown quite clearly that the real value of the River Prize is in the status that it brings to the shortlist of entries and to the winner. In other words, they are recognised in an international forum for the quality of what they've been doing. And that has benefits uh, back at the ground level where they're working. So we would encourage groups who have been looking to restore rivers, looking to maintain rivers in a, in a, high, in a high quality state, whether, as I said, whether they be rivers or estuaries or lakes, to consider applying particularly groups that have been at this for some little period of time that believe they have an innovative approaches and believe they have actually achieved uh, some positive outcomes. Mm -hmm.